And welcome back to the Brooklyn Friends School E-News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. On today's show, we'll be hearing from students about their New Year's resolutions, and we'll be hearing about what's happening in the new year from Dr. Larry Weiss. But first, from our roving reporter, Paul Romano. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So I was going around asking kids about New Year's resolutions. Did you make one? Um, not yet. I've been definitely thinking about the topic. Maybe focus more in school. Maybe, like, try to enroll or something into a new activity. Happy New Year. Did you make any New Year's resolution? Um, uh, just put in a lot of effort this year with schoolwork and everything. Because if you don't, bad grades, bad grades. Yeah. <laughs> no. I see. I see. Yeah. I'm trying to make my locker a little neater, which is kind of complicated because usually whenever I try doing that, everything just ends up falling. That's a nice goal. Mainly to have a good year, get better at school, read more. Just continue along, just go down a good path for this year. Did you make a New Year's resolution? Not yet. Probably to stretch more and eat more candy. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) Maybe read more books. Read more books as well? Cool. Okay. Um, One of them was to start working out, and the other one was to... Uh, be more organized. Maybe I would schedule what I'm doing better. I want to do my first um, double black diamond in skiing. Also, I want to get um, three A pluses in school. Well, I'm trying to read more. Okay. <laughs> I love books. Cool. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? No, unfortunately. You haven't thought about it? No. I haven't got the chance. Are you looking forward to anything in the new year? Um, yeah. Walking by myself home. I'm like me and my family are testing it out. Okay, how's it going so far? Great. Well, that's good. Good for you. Growing up. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. So today in studio we have Dr. Larry Weiss. Larry is the head of Brooklyn Friends School. And it's really great to have you here. Happy New Year. Do you have a New Year's resolution, either for yourself or for Brooklyn Friends School? This is going to be a challenging year in the country and the world, as well as in our local community. My resolution is just to help ensure that the school remains true to its values and is a place that not only students and faculty, but also parents and alumni and friends of the school can feel that Brooklyn Friends is a place that they can share their concerns, how we can really work together to see that our ethical commitments and our concern for that of God in each person uh, really can be sustained and nourished in a year where I think a lot of our fundamental assumptions are going to be challenged. The school really needs to come through for its community. So what is the State of the Union now that we're in January? Our enrollment is 910 students this year, 1617, which is a substantial increase from the 650 that it was in 2010 when I started here. And we are somewhere between 40 and 60 students away from the full enrollment that uh, our whole expansion program was based on. And so uh, we're looking at completing a growth cycle and then really looking at uh, sustainability as our next really big hurdle. How do we maintain the dynamism of the school with uh, an enrollment that's not going to grow very much? We made some major uh, staffing improvements on the administrative side in the middle school and upper school this year, and that's had a big impact. But I think we have a a really great facility at this point. We have a great faculty. So So you would say that the State of the Union is strong? I think it's strong. We're about to enter uh, the decision part of uh, an admission cycle, where at least for the ninth grade, which is where I put most of my attention, 
We have a record number of applicants and very, very strong and deep applicant pool, and that's an indication from the outside that the school is perceived uh, in a positive way. This coming year, are there things you're looking forward to, in particular at Brooklyn Friends? Well, this is our 150th uh, year, our sesquicentennial, which is, as someone who has taught history and continues to be very enthusiastic about historical study, this is a very major event. It just happens that there are other major Brooklyn institutions that are also 150 this year. Prospect Park and uh, the Brooklyn Historical Society are both celebrating their sesquicentennials. And that reflects very dynamic changes that started in Brooklyn after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So the sesquicentennial gives us an opportunity to approach and expand our relationships with a lot of the core constituencies that made Brooklyn Friends possible in 1867 and made its growth and development possible over the last 150 years. For me, the Quaker community has always been an important part of our constituency. I've tried as much as possible to encourage um, our commitments to Quaker values and our participation in Quaker institutions. We've got some uh, major uh, developments uh, there. We are co-sponsoring with Mary McDowell the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference that will bring a very significant number of uh, students from other Quaker schools here. We are strengthening our relationship with Sidcott Friends Boarding and Day School uh, in, uh, in England where our seniors will be doing a, a visit uh, mm -hmm. right after graduation. Right. They're both uh, a friend school and an international baccalaureate as well. Which makes a very big difference, and they've visited here. So, Larry, uh, how can parents get more involved in the sesquicentennial? The first time I've been able to say that correctly. Good. <laughs> I'll keep trying. So the default is always the 150th anniversary. But in addition to the sort of Quaker side of things, I think that parents and alumni are two of the principal constituencies that we're looking to reach out to for the sesquicentennial. Just let me say a little bit about alumni first. I'm not sure how many people know that I taught here from 1973 to 1979, and so the classes of the 1970s and some of the early 1980s classes, I'm particularly looking at those classes uh, to get involved uh, with the sesquicentennial. Some of them were involved as younger students in the centennial um, in 1967. Wow. So it's, it's an exciting kind of linkage. But in terms of alumni participation in the school, uh, on the one hand, the more traditional role, which is uh, financial support, but in, I think, even more important ways of um, being available to current students and recent alums as resources, as supports, as friends, there's a lot more we can do. And so we're going to be doing a lot of consciousness raising on the alumni side. Mm -hmm. On the parents' side, parents have been extremely positively involved in the capital campaign that made it possible for us to open the high school building. We're looking for some motivated parents as underwriters for the various activities of the sesquicentennial. In addition to financial support, a lot of those activities involve uh, community-based organizations that we have parents, former parents, and current parents who are involved in. And um, if they want to get in touch with who's running this program, who would they get well, in touch Well, uh, the Advancement Office and particularly Karen Edelman are the people to talk to. Where the alumni and the parents and the fundraising piece comes together is the fact that as we enter this sustainability period, uh, after our major growth, we want to address one of the areas where competitively we are weakest in, term, in terms of a lot of our cohort schools. We are strongest in terms of scholarship support, but we are weakest in terms of endowment income that supports that kind of scholarship support. So we are going to have uh, some really uh, significant efforts to build a scholarship endowment as part of the 150th. We're really hoping that current parents, former parents, uh, can be involved with that along with alumni and our larger community. All right. So we're not only looking forward toward this year, but certainly for the next 150 years. 
Exactly. You know, clearly the next four years, eight years, however we look at it, are going to be challenging in a lot of ways. We just want to make sure that we can maintain our independence, uh, the independence of our curriculum, the independence of our uh, ability to um, act out of our values, and uh, we want Brooklyn Friends to just come through as uh, a real shining light, if you will, in, in the Quaker sense of uh, the downtown Brooklyn community and of our larger uh, Brooklyn Friends community. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. All right. All right. But thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to share this mode of communication. Thank you so much, Dr. Weiss. So I'm looking forward to the sesquicentennial, and I hope all of you will consider getting involved as well. So that does it for today's show. Please just remember to let your lives speak. <laughs>